Welcome back to our series on the secret of the golden flower. And we're just going to take off from where we left off before the questions last time. In the book of changes, it is said, heaven created water through the one. Now, <laughs> I want to say a little bit about the book of changes. Yi King or Yi Ching depending on the dialect of Chinese. In the Book of Changes, the various states of change are denoted by hexagrams. A hexagram is a figure with six lines. Each line could be yang or yin. One way to look at this is as a system of the states of the chakras. There are seven chakras. And the I Ching says all change is accomplished in six stages and the seventh brings return. So the seventh chakra is the crown chakra, the thousand petal lotus, the golden flower at the top of the head. And this chakra is always active and it is neither yin nor yang. It is above, beyond, transcendental to the changes of time and nature. But the other six chakras aren't. Sex, energy, movement, feeling, speech, communication, and thought. And so the flow of energy in these chakras can be either outward, yang, or inward, yin. So we can look at the I Ching as a picture of the states of the chakras at any one moment and the interpretations as how this state will make you feel and how it should be dealt with and what state should come next. And I'll leave the elaboration of this view of I Ching as an exercise for the viewers. <laughs> it's taken me 40 years of study of the I Ching to come to this conclusion. And I mean practical study of using it every day. Uh, so heaven created water. What does that mean? Heaven is high. That is the attribute of heaven. And water is deep. That's the principal attribute of water. So that which is high created that which is deep. In other words, yang created yin. The space, the emptiness, the primordial chaos is the origin of everything. And the manifestation, nature, the uh, material world, if you want to call it that, is actually created from emptiness, from nothingness, from space. So how is it that that which is high can create that which is deep? Well, it must also have deepness within it. And this is a fact that the heaven or the uh, emptiness is the root of all qualities. It's the origin of all manifestations. Now, what does this have to do with enlightenment and meditation? Well, actually, a lot. We are in a trap. And the trap is called becoming. The process of becoming is cyclical. That's why it's called the wheel of samsara. It goes around and around from birth to death, and then birth again. The same thing is going on 
in the process of enlightenment, except instead of leading to death and rebirth, it leads to enlightenment and having the choice of whether to enter life again or not. Those who become enlightened are not bound anymore by their karma. They can go anywhere, do anything, be whatever they like to be without karmic entanglement. So mostly they choose to stay out of manifestation. So we have to understand that when we leave the manifestation at the time of enlightenment and we go into heaven, the great beyond, you know, the world of light, when you meditate, you should be seeing light. If you're not, something is wrong. You're not doing it right. <laughs> you don't have good enough concentration. And we'll get into the details of this concentration and the light and so on when we get to the part where we talk about the method. Right now we're talking about the background. But try to understand, everything comes from light. Even water. No? Everything. So light is the origin of everything. Then to attain enlightenment means to return to the light. No? And of course that means we have to let go of the darkness. Well, the darkness is yin, the manifestation, the creation, existence. And the light, the yang, is the space, the emptiness, the source, the background, the container for everything. So this is the true power of the Great One. The Great One's power is that it is beyond both manifestation and unmanifestation, beyond birth and death. So the idea is to attain, to realize the Great One, to connect, as in yoga. Yoga comes from the root word yukt, which means to connect, like hitching a horse to a cart. So if a man attains this one, he becomes alive. If he misses it, he dies. What does this mean? Again, this book is always speaking in code. It's speaking in a special language called Dharma language. Dharma language is different from ordinary language. <laughs> a lot of times it appears nonsensical or confusing, but actually it's extremely clear if you know if you have experience of the phenomena that it's talking about. So, if a man, if a human being, attains, in other words, realizes the one, that which is beyond both birth and death, beyond both manifestation and unmanifestation, beyond conditioned existence, he becomes alive truly alive, 100% alive. Uh, and I can tell you from my own personal experience that this is true. You have not lived until you have tasted enlightenment. And you have not lived fully until you have attained the fourth path, the ultimate enlightenment. And once that is attained, once that is realized, not understood, not known, and certainly not known about, but experienced directly, then there's no more doubts. Then one can live fully without holding anything back, being in a completely relaxed state, because everything is just as it should be. There is no one in control. Well, last of all, us. <laughs> We're not in control. We'll never be in control. We're part of nature. And nature is perfect. Nature is inexplicable, inconceivable, incomprehensible, but perfect. And if we just go with nature, if we accept nature, our nature and the nature around us, and 
Just allow it and not struggle against it, not try to control it. Then our life becomes beautiful, becomes sublime, becomes very blissful. And if we miss this realization, if we go through our human life and don't invest the time and energy to attain self-realization, we have to die. The body is going to die anyway, but the being inside doesn't have to die because we are of the same nature as the one. We are of the same nature as the primordial spirit. Now you might say, oh yes, yes, I have heard all of this. It's all obvious. Yes, yes. Many people are teaching this. What do you have that is new? Well, what we have that's new is that we've realized it. <laughs> We're not talking about it. We're speaking directly from our awareness. We're not reading from a book. I mean, we're taking quotes from this uh, secret of the golden flower and trying to explain it, but that's only to provide a framework for the topics necessary to describe the method and the context. Without the context, the method is meaningless. Without the background, simply doing the procedure or doing the method won't have any effect. People say all the time, well, you're talking about meditation and stuff. How do you do it? You say it's a one-step process. Just turn in. How? How? Dude, it's your mind. It's your consciousness. Or you are that consciousness. So turn it around. Don't ask how. Hmm? If you get thrown in the water, do you turn around and ask people on the shore, how do I swim? <laughs> well, it's a little late, isn't it? So now you are in the world and all your chakras are mostly flowing out. The energy is being wasted. It's going out into the world. Whereas you could live effortlessly by simply allowing the energy to come in. This is the great secret. This is how, for example, uh, world-class martial artists can defeat others effortlessly. I mean, they're not even sweating, they're not even breathing hard, and they can defeat. I saw my own teacher, little old lady, uh, 83 years old, Mrs. Yu. I saw her defeat an entire room of young, strong men most of which were martial arts students themselves, huh? without even touching them. What to speak of moving and, you know, throwing people. <laughs> like She didn't have to do that at all. She just used the energy. <sighs> By interfering with their own muscular coordination, she could make them trip and fall and run up against the wall, whatever she wanted to, to do. We work so hard, and why? There's no need for it. We have been misled, conditioned to believe that we live in a, a universe of things and objects, whereas actually we live in a universe of flows and energy. So when we wake up to this, when we realize this, everything starts to look really different. And suddenly we gain a degree of competence, a degree of power over our own life that's just unprecedented. So let's go on. But even if a man lives in the power, chi or pran, and does not see the power, just as fishes live in water but do not see the water. So we actually live in an ocean, an ocean of energy, Chi, Pran, Ki, whatever you want to call it. Huh? And in that ocean, there are currents, there are waves, there are fishes, all kinds of life. But we can't see it. Why? Because, again, 
our attention, our energy is going out. So these material eyes can only see material objects. They can't see the energy. Energy can be felt. There's another sense that can be awakened. And the energy can be felt, grasped, manipulated, moved. You're going to say, how, right? <laughs> I knew it. Well, Mrs. Yu used to say again and again, the chi follows the yi. And what is yi? Directed attention. When attention is directed in a certain way, the energy follows automatically. It's effortless. And this attention is like a muscle. It can be trained. It can be developed. It can be made stronger and stronger, more precise and exact. So that's what this training is all about. This is what any training in Chinese yoga is going to be all about. The deep secrets of Chinese martial arts are revealed in these few statements. Everything else is a detail. Everything else is a development of this one principle. So that's why we have to go over it and go deep into it and understand it before starting to talk about the how. Okay? That everything is actually energy. Yes, yes, I know, physics says the same thing, but physics is, again, only looking outward. It's not looking inward and seeing how it relates to our actual experience of life. They have gotten hung up on the physical senses. They are not seeing the energy. In fact, they're actually denying that it even exists. Yet, techniques like Kirlian photography have been around for a long time, and they show the energy flows. So why do we have to die? A man dies when he has no chi, just as the fishes are destroyed when deprived of water. We're born with a certain amount of chi. It's called original chi. It's stored in the Dan Tian, the energy chakra, three fingers below the navel. So this chi is finite, finite, limited. A certain quantity of chi is there. Every time that we spend energy going out into the world, a little bit of that chi is lost. And finally, when it's all gone, the body dies. If you're identified with the body, then you will also die. If you have not realized yourself as pure awareness, then you are also subject to death. Why? Because there's no more chi. Like a fish out of water. You can't get any more nourishment. You have to have chi of a certain type. You have to have original chi to be able to digest the food and air and impressions and light and other energy that is coming from the environment. So when you have the original chi, you can digest it by an alchemical process. But when that original chi is exhausted, you're finished. That is why we practice turning around the light, turning around the energy flows from going outward to coming inward. That is the secret of the golden flower. That is how we attain enlightenment. Therefore, the adepts have taught the people to hold fast to the primal and to guard the one. It is the circular course of the light and the protection of the center. Now you have to understand this Chinese concept of the center. It can mean the physical center of gravity. It can mean the inside of a vortex that remains still while the energy is flowing around. Or the center can be emptiness. The emptiness that is the source of everything. The actual source of everything. Not the apparent source. No. For example, the apparent source of this body is the mother. But without 
the insemination by the father, the body doesn't develop in the womb. You see? So there's a direct cause and an indirect cause. A, an efficient cause and a, uh, what is that called? Consequent cause. So the original cause of everything is the one. It is the primordial chi in the universe and in ourselves. So by circulating the light, by gaining control over the chi and circulating in it, around through the channels, through the chakras, then one gains control over it. One can manipulate one's own energy and physiology. One never gets sick. One never becomes exhausted. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful ability to have. And I'm very, very fortunate to have met Mrs. Yu early in my life and gained understanding of qi and the ability to move it to a certain extent anyway. So this circulation of the qi, uh, Mantak Chia, and also Dr. Uh, Dr. Yu, uh, Dr. Wang Liang Yu, have published excellent books on the circulation of the qi. I recommend them. Jing Ming Yan also has very, very good books on qi. And even going back to the original book on qigong written by Da Mo, uh, Bodhidharma. So if you read these books, I'm not going to go into it in detail here because it's a preliminary exercise. By practicing qigong, one can learn to circulate the qi among all the connections of the energy centers. I'm going to throw a, a figure up here of the seven chakra system and then a very quickly look at the connections among and between those chakras. All these connections are energy flows and you can learn to sense them, to control them, to move energy along them and to reverse the energy, which is the principal secret of the golden flower. And now one more thing. If one guards this true power, one can prolong the span of life and can then apply the methods of creating an immortal body by melting and mixing. So again, he's talking in code. Okay, if you can stop the flow of energy from going out and reverse it and bring it in instead, that increases your vitality. It increases your awareness, your energy. It makes it possible to live a full life. I'm 69 years old, okay? I have perfect health and I have wonderful uh, feelings of lightness and ecstasy in my body almost all the time. Uh, and if they're gone, if they're missing, all I have to do is close my eyes, take a breath, focus on the energy, and boom, it's back. Every time I look inside, I see so much light. Uh, I can go into a dark room, close my eyes, and it's full of light. Not on the outside, but on the inside. So this light, this is the chi. This is how we experience it. If you look inside and it's dark, means your chi is depleted. You need to learn qigong. And I think uh, maybe a little later on, I'll make a separate series on qigong practice, because I think it's very important for those who want to approach the secret of the golden flower. Now, to create an immortal body is discussed extensively in the Buddha Sutras. And we'll get into the specific techniques later on. But what it really means, it's not about creating, how can I say, like a little replica of a human body that runs around and, you know, astral projects and all this. That's nonsense. No. It's about creating a body of chi, a body of energy, the energy body. Now, an energy body is not going to look like a meat body, okay? First of all, it's going to be luminous, 
fully conscious and not subject to any physical limitations. And this process of melting and mixing means to destroy the conditioning, the barriers, the inhibitions, the blocks in all of the energy centers and their connections. So this is the work that we have to do to realize the secret of the golden flower.